So this is Brian coming to you from Minnesota over at my dad's house. And in this video, I want to talk about particularly Neville Goddard, if you know who he is. Great at manifesting, a fantastic teacher. Um, and I want to talk about his teacher, Abdullah. And this is a fantastic story about how Abdullah really taught him how to become the powerful manifester he is today. Then I want to tell you a story about another mentor of mine, David Nagel, and his relationship with his teacher, uh, Bob Proctor, a story he likes to tell. And then we're going to put it all together. And we're going to take a deep look at a simple principle that's going on here that really allows successful people to be as successful as they are. And you're going to see a similarity between the two. So uh, let's dive right in. But before I do, I want to invite you to like, subscribe, and share. And definitely comment if you get some value out of this or if you've gotten value out of my previous videos. I really, really appreciate it. So let's dive right in. Neville Goddard. Who was Neville Goddard? Neville Goddard was a fantastic teacher of manifestation. He taught people how to manifest their dreams, how to bring their dreams into reality. And he had a teacher. His name was Abdullah. And I've heard a lot of great things about Abdullah. I've never been able to find a recording of him, but he sounds like a fantastic human being that had a wealth of knowledge to share. Now, Abdullah was teaching Neville Goddard how to manifest. This was during the Great Depression. Abdullah was very successful, always had plenty of money, was always successful. And Neville Goddard really wanted to go to Barbados. Now, at this time, Neville Goddard was a dancer. There were no jobs for dancers during the Great Depression. There were uh, food lines everywhere. Um, he barely had any money to eat, and yet he still wanted to go home for vacation, for the Christmas vacation to see his family, because he hadn't seen his family in a long time. So he's talking to Abdullah, his teacher and his friend about it, and Abdullah said very simply, well, then you're in Barbados. You've, you've already gone to Barbados. I think that's how he said it. You've already gone to Barbados. It's just, that's it. And Neville was like, what? He said, you've already gone to Barbados. Now I'm going to do the really short version of this and we'll put a link in this video so you can see the longer version here at Neville teach it because I think you should. But in short, he'd said over and over to him, you're already in Barbados. It's done. And he kept thinking, well, this is kind of strange. So he started to practice. It was a simple practice. He'd lay his head on the pillow at night. And every night he would imagine he was sleeping in Barbados. Like he was already there. New York was super far away. He'd picture New York far away. And all through the day, he'd picture himself walking in Barbados. I'm already here. But every once in a while, these doubts would creep into his mind because nothing was changing. He's still broke. He's still living in New York. He's still a struggling dancer. And he'd go to Abdullah and say, yeah, nothing's changing. And he goes, what do you mean nothing's changing? You're already in Barbados. It's already done. And he'd walk away and slam his door and and he'd be like, OK, well, I guess it's already done. So he keep doing the same thing. And then finally, he got a message from his brother that his brother was going to buy him a ticket home to be with the family, send him some money, was going to buy him a first class ticket. And he was super excited and ran to Abdullah and said, my brother's buying me a ticket home and it's first class about half the way there. But it but at least it's half the way there. And Abdullah said, no, you're going first class. The whole way there it's already done and again he said it's already done and he said this is crazy but he kept doing it he kept envisioning himself there he kept seeing himself as already there as if it was done and something wild happened as he went down to get on the boat to go to barbados the ticket his brother had randomly bought for him somebody canceled their trip on the boat and suddenly there was a first class cabin open and he went the whole way first class exactly like Abdullah taught him. And he began to realize the power of what Abdullah was teaching him. Abdullah was not letting any doubt, any worry, any of the lower emotions and ag flap into his mind. He was up there with his heart blasted wide open in peace and joy, but in a sense of what Napoleon Hill used to say, this definiteness sense of purpose. This is done. This has already happened. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen someday. It's done. It's already happened. And this really bugged me for a long time. I couldn't wrap my round, mind around it because I'm looking around me and I'm seeing it's not done. But he's saying it's done. And then there's a sense of lying to yourself. And this confusion came into my mind. Yet Neville Goddard taught this to tons of people. Tons of people manifested. And then I would do it. My mind would stress out because I was such an analytical person. Now, if you've ever done something like this, I had to do a lot of thinking about it. I had to do a lot of pondering and meditating on it. And it all began to reveal itself to me. Why does this work? Why does it work so well when you begin to see beyond the obvious that's right in front of you or the obvious being the you know, 
the world, the physical world that's right in front of you. And it's really simple. It's because the imaginary world gets created first. The spiritual world, the energetic world gets created first. You first imagine the blueprints, see, imagine the building even before the blueprints that built the Empire State Building, then create the blueprints, then everybody imagines it together and the Empire State Building comes into being. Somebody had to imagine this color combo in this shirt before it came into being. Somebody had to imagine the iPhone and all the iterations of it and every little microchip and, and detail that goes into it before the iPhone came into being. You see, the imaginary world, the energetic world, the spiritual world comes first. And then the physical world comes into being. Everything comes from spirit into physical or from energy into physical. In quantum physics, everything's in waveform. And when we start to focus on it, it becomes a particle and we bring it into physical form, right? And so you're almost creating in a sense, like an energetic blueprint in your mind. And when you are really solid, and there's some details to this I've discovered, but when you're really solid holding that blueprint in mind, and not breaking from it and being solid with it and being consistent with it. And this is part of the key, open heart, dropped into your body, dropped into your gut, grounded into the ground. The embodiment's got to be there. And you don't break from that. That's what moves the physical world into becoming. In other words, that's what moves mountains. You see, the energetic world comes first and then the physical world wants to catch up with it but if you are completely invested in this world out here and you can't see beyond your five senses and this is this is what is then you're caught in an infinite loop the energetic world is constantly recreating itself to look like the world around you that's why your life doesn't grow much doesn't change much but people who don't identify with this world and identify with let's say higher states of consciousness, energetic world, spiritual world, the quantum world, you could say, can really feel energy move through their body, what we call being and feeling. They can actually create an internal energetic now-based feeling of what they want to have happen. And it has happened. It's happened in the quantum world. Matter of fact, in the quantum world, in quantum physics, everything is coexists at the same time. Everything in time and space coexists at the same time. And consciousness is pointing a pointer in a sense to the experience that's happening in the perceived now in the physical world. But when you go back to the non-physical world, it all exists at once. So in reality, what you're doing is you're activating in the quantum world, the possibility you want to bring into the physical world and you're making it more real to your internal senses than the physical world. So the physical world has to ultimately adjust and change to that world. And people that have really strong, definite sense of purpose can really, uh, they don't just get stuck in their mind. They feel it with their heart. I talk about this a lot. You could fall in love with it. I love this idea. Think about whatever you love tends to show up more and more around you, particular activating system starts seeing it. You can speak it congruently. You've got love, you're focused. Like I can see this world happening. I can see this bar, the, me in Barbados. I can fall in love with being at Barbados. I can speak confidently as if I'm in Barbados and it's already happened. I am confident in my gut that I'm going to be, that I'm in Barbados. Not going to be, see, I screwed up that I'm in Barbados and it's already happened. And I'm turned on for it down in my hips. This is the embodiment piece. I can feel the ground beneath me as if it's Barbados, the grounding piece. I'm grounded into Barbados, then that world ultimately wants to catch up with you. So when we take a deeper look at this, your sense of embodiment, your ability to focus, to fall in love and get turned on is everything. And to really bring this home a little deeper, I'm going to tell you another story. I had a mentor, his name was David, David Dangle, and he's another famous coach, business coach. And he tells the story about when he was working with Bob Proctor. Bob Proctor was his main mentor for many years. And he was going to an event, he said. He was flying on a plane from one city to the next. And I think he had a layover and he was supposed to go to another city to be at an event with Bob. And he called Bob and he said, Bob, I can't make it, man. There's a storm here that all the air, all the planes are grounded. They won't let us get out. Uh, we're stuck. And he says, there's nothing I could do about it. And Bob, having worked with him for a while, and I would notice this with certain teachers, at one level, they'll let you get away with certain things. But when you start to reach the upper levels of training with these teachers, there's things they just 
won't let you get away with anymore because you have reached a level where they're really going to challenge you at a much bigger level. And I've noticed that even with my clients at one level, they're learning, but at another level, as they get bigger and bigger, I'm going to throw challenges at them. They're really more powerful. So when David called Bob, Bob said to him, when are you going to believe what you teach? And he said, what do you mean? He said, and I think that I might be paraphrasing that. So if somebody knows a little better, it could be a little off, but it was similar to that. When are you going to believe what you teach or when are you going to practice what you teach? Something like that. And he said, and to something the effect of you create your reality. And he, he was like, what? And then I think Bob hung up on him or something like that. And he was like, what am I supposed to do? It's a storm. There's nothing I can do. He was buying into the reality of the storm. And then he started thinking, well, can I rent a car and drive to the next city and fly? What can I do to get there? What can I do to challenge this belief that I can't get there? What can I do right now? By law of polarity, if y'all anybody know that law, if there's a burning desire on one side, there has to be a way to achieve it on the other side, right? It's the, it's the perfect polarity. And polarities exist everywhere in the universe and they're unfailing. So if there's a burning desire, there has to be a way to achieve it. So he said, well, there's got to be a way. Let me try some different things. And he started looking around and he went over to this one woman and he, that he had talked to before. And he said, look, are there any seats flying out right now on any airline to any city? And she said, I told you the whole airport is on shutdown. We can't let anybody fly out. And he goes, just check for me. See, the other version of him would have bought into that story, but he's like, no, I'm determined. You know, Bob's got pressure on me and I can feel that pressure. And now my definite sense of purpose, I'm going to do my best to make this happen. I'm going to make this happen. This has already happened, as Abdullah would say, it's done. Started to get into his system. He keeps seeing the end result saying, this has happened. This has happened. That's what's happening in the mind when that much pressure is on you. I'll give you another example in a little bit that's simpler. Probably something that you've experienced in your own life. And so, so he kept envisioning it and saying, it's got to be a way. So he said, just check for me, just check. And she checked and she goes, oh, that's weird. There's one seat on this one plane that's about to fly out. And she said, I can put you on that, but it's not going to the city you want. And he said, that's fine. Just put me on it. So he ran to that plane. He jumped on it, got on the plane and he was out. He got out of the uh, airport, landed in another city, immediately purchased another ticket to get to the city where he was supposed to be at the event. And he got there on time. He pulled it off. And he said that was a life-changing moment for him about how much power he actually has to create his own reality and how often he falls short and quits because he's afraid of the tension. He doesn't want to step into it. He doesn't want to push himself. Do you see what I mean? And he's afraid of the emotions that will come up. And that's the vulnerability of the emotional part that comes inside the tension. And he began to realize that he had a lot more power than he ever realized in the past. And I want to illustrate this one more way. A lot of times this happens to you, to people out there all the time. Our back's against the wall. We don't think about it. I'm going to give you an example, but then I want you to think about an example in your life. Put it in the comments. We, for example, like my friend, we'll lose our job. And we'll say, oh, jobs are so hard to get. I'm putting out applications. And for like, I think it was 10 months to a year, he's like, oh, I'm trying to find a job. It's hard. And you could hear the presuppositions in his mind. This is difficult. This is challenging. I can't get a job. I'm struggling. It's really hard. I don't know. Oh, poor me. And then something interesting happened. His unemployment ran out and he didn't have any more money. And within one week, he had a job. Within one week, he was starting a new job. And it was very interesting to me. I always remembered that moment. I was really young and I thought, you got that job in one week. You could have got a job at any time. You just chose not to. And you kept talking about how hard it was and how difficult it was. And then suddenly when the pressure was on you, you showed up and went out and found a job. Immediately, you started calling right away. You got, you got assertive. Your tone changed. Your definite sense of purpose changed. Your definiteness of purpose. And you got the job. So then the question is, where have you done that in your life? If you look at your life, where was something really challenging, really difficult, but the pressure to get it done was so great, you were not going to quit. You became ultimately determined and made it happen. Was it getting into a school? Was it um, 
Was it ending a relationship? What was it? And what was that moment that shifted you? And what did it feel like when you became super definite about what you were going to do? And definitely put that in the comments because that's what I want you guys to realize. There is this power inside of us that manifests. And when that power activates, it's insane. And when you can learn to activate that power at will consciously versus it happening to you unconsciously, think about how much that will change your life. Now, I watch a lot of people try to apply these principles. They'll read books on, you know, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, which is a fantastic book, or they'll read uh, a lot of books on these principles. And, and what they're missing a lot of the times, and I was missing this too, is the embodiment piece. They're do, trying to do it all from their head. To really do this properly, you have to, and this is what happens when people become really definitive, is they begin to feel it with their whole body. Their whole body activates. Thoughts actually turn down and intention through the whole core of the body turns up. But if you're in a heavy thinking mode, thinking about how to get this to happen, you're actually probably going to create more walls and more frustration, ultimately get angry and quit. And again, I'd love to see a comment on that. Who's experienced both sides of that when their whole body got activated, their thoughts turned off and they became determined, almost like a flow state to make it happen. Courage kicked up. And on the emotional scale for all of you that know what I'm talking about. And they they drove right through all their obstacles versus when they were thinking a lot, trying to figure out how to make it happen, determine creating frustration, ultimately pain, and then quitting. So this to me is one really powerful teaching. And I'll definitely put a link into the Abdullah story so you can check that out. Uh, and uh, I don't know if there's a link to the David Nagel story. I can't remember if I heard that from him at a live event or <laughs> if he uh, did tell that. If I can find one, I'll put it in. And uh, hopefully you learned something from this. And I can't wait to read the comments on this one. Definitely check out my previous video on happiness and my deep thoughts on the power of joy, happiness, and being at the top of the emotional scale in manifesting and creating the best life of your dream. So that's a great video. I think that's it. With that said, remember, only the confident really live, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.